King Mike. I don't know who's gonna sit on the Iron Throne. Me, come on now. I think I've sat on the Iron Throne. I have an actual dire wolf. I've sat on the Iron Throne. Speaking of this Iron Throne here, we are gonna teach you guys how to build one. So last year we threw a season six premiere party. I wanted an Iron Throne for our premiere party. So I actually found a instructable on how to make an iron throne and that's actually where we got all of the instructions we're giving you today we did kind of twist it around a little bit made it our own so it is going to be a little different and kind of a little easier but we will link that instructable down below for you guys for to reference thought about making another iron throne this year because we do not have access to it right now for you guys but instead we're just going to walk you through the steps on how to make your own iron throne what you'll need is a plastic Adirondack chair. Now we recommend one that has like the planks behind it because you could blend those in and make those look like swords. They're about 15 bucks at your local home hardware. hardware store. And the next item you're gonna need is half inch pink foam insulation. You'll also need several sheets of craft foam. I just recommend going to Michael's and getting like the big packs. It does not matter what color it is. Nope. Just get as much as you can. I would do like the one eighth inch thick um, crack bone. The next thing you're going to need is about a dozen wooden yard sticks. Yeah, they're about 75 cents again at Home Depot. Yeah, at a local hardware store. And then you'll need things like various screws, tape, wood glue, liquid nails, anything to kind of hold some stuff together. And then one of the last things you'll need is going to be paint. Preferably a spray paint, something that'll work on things like foam. You would need, you're going to need a black primer paint, a hammered steel, kind of gray metallic paint and then any kind of golds and silvers to touch up as well. So now that you have everything, let's get started. Yay. All right, so once you have your chair, you're going to set it up in an open area where you have plenty of space to work and you're gonna start with your framework. That's gonna be basically kind of taping up your yardsticks and kind of getting them in the design that looks like the iron throne for your back. Yep, so you're gonna take your yardsticks you are going to set them out the back of the analog deck chair. We kind of made them extensions of like the blocks mm -hmm. so we could turn them into the hilts of the swords like connected to the backing of the chair. You want to take the rulers and kind of frame out the bottom of the chair. You want it to look more squared. So we squared off the bottoms and the sides using the rulers just as an outside frame. Mike here did most of that. He had to cut the rulers to fit some certain shapes and then he used yep. small screws to screw them into the chair and screw them together. Also liquid nails helps for this Lip too. I probably try and I'd recommend liquid nails first. The screws takes some work. Yeah, it's a ruler, so yeah. it's not like actually. It's not the best easy, one. but it's not the hardest thing in the world, but it's just time consuming. This is an optional next step, and this is the one the instructables did, but we didn't do. He got kind of metal, like thin metal beams from a department store and used it as extra support um, along the sides of the chair. We didn't do this, mm -hmm. it wasn't really necessary. So if you feel like you need the extra support and want to make it like big and blockier, you can. They also added in, um, they also made are crafted and sanded down foam or um, swords out of that insulation foam to put down the front yep. again we didn't do this part another person I've seen use plastic swords like ones that you can buy like like a, like a toy sword and put those in front and just spray paint it with the rest of it just to kind of give it more of a solid look in front so you can do that as well so the next step is adding or making the sword so what you're gonna do now that your rulers are in place from the chair you're going to take that insulation foam that you've got and then put it on each side of the rulers making square blocks and evening out with the chairs and then also you can take square blocks and setting them on top to make the hilt once you're done there then you're gonna move on to sanding you're gonna sand down each of these swords that way they kind of blend and they're even um, sand them to as much as you kind of feel comfortable with. Then you can go ahead and have fun with it and design your hilts using the sanding. Mike kind of jumped in here with this. And if you don't know what that part is, that's the part that you hold on the sword and it's the part that guards your hand. This was a little bit challenging because this took a little bit more finesse, but basically you're gonna make a handle that you like or that's a different shape. I mean, I really experimented. You can ask her, I did every single handle differently. I sanded it down, put patterns in them. Very, very fun, but very time consuming. So make sure you're really putting in some effort and thought into this. And what you can do here is just get like a little piece of insulation foam. You don't need to glue it on. Nope. You can sand it down. You can make them round or square or triangle, however you want. 
You can add like diamonds and shapes to it. You can do little engraving and prints on it. Have fun with it. Make them all different. The Iron Throne is basically a collection of defeated swords, so yep. they're not going to look the same. Yeah, that's the one big thing is try to make everyone just a little bit unique in its own. Yeah, so or once you get the top of the hilts done, you can um, glue them to the uh, other hilts that you create that you glued on top of yep. the foam. All right, so the next step is going to be a primer. So you're going to want to get a black latex primer to put on all of the swords before you put on the paint because if you put the paint on first it's going to eat away at the foam yeah just the insulation foam so the insulation foam for some reason can't handle the paint and we learned this the hard way so all of our swords ended up looking really destroyed where the foam was ended up looking okay but we recommend you coat it with a latex paint in order to keep from the foam from getting destroyed and eaten away from the paint that you will be using later yep the next step is Craft foam, so uh, the now is kind of the fun part. You are just gonna cut long swords, so just blocks of pointy ends. Cut as many as you can, as long as you can, and you are just gonna tape them and glue them up all over this chair. You're gonna cover up all the holes, put them in every, every which way, up the back, down the sides, through the middle. Just cover the whole thing with as much craft foam as you can. I had such a good time doing this. <laughs> it should look like a rainbow threw up on your chair. And that's when I really started seeing the chair. I was like, wow, this is coming together. All right, next step is going to be to break out the cardboard. And when you want to get that big like signature look of how the Iron Throne looks, where it just is Amazing. All the pointy parts in the back. Yeah, you're gonna want to take that cardboard and just like you did with the foam, you're gonna want to cut out as many sword shapes as far as the blades are concerned and cut out as many as you can out of that cardboard. Then what you, once you get a set shape of what you're looking for, you're going to take a ruler, one of your uh, yardsticks, and you're gonna place it along the back and that's gonna kinda help secure them once you screw that in or glue them together. So you're gonna cut out cardboard into the same sword shapes you did with your craft home. You're gonna make them a little longer though. And then you can do as many layers or as long, as short as you want. Just make sure it's gonna peek over those um, insulation foam swords you made on the back of your analog chair. You're gonna lay them out on the ground like you would a fan. And like Mike said, take a ruler across them and glue them all to the ruler um, to secure them in place. The next step here is the fun part and that's painting. You're first gonna coat everything, the cardboard fan you just made, the chairs and all of the craft foam with a black primer paint. The next step in painting is gonna be going over the everything with like a hammered steel paint color, which is the color we actually use, but it's kind of like a darker silver basically. Yeah, you wanna get a spray paint, that's the easiest way to put it on. Yep. Definitely not a hand paint, spray paint everything. Don't, don't hand paint it. Yep. You're probably going to need a couple coats of the hammer and steel to really give it that silver, um, like worked in metal look. Yep. And then next, you will take any kind of gold, maybe like a metallic black, and add in those accents. So we use gold for the hilts, particularly to make the hilt stand out from the rest of the swords. Oh, also with the cardboard, we ended up cutting out little just like T-shaped hilts to add to the craft foam in the front just to kind of give it a little more depth. Up close, it looks like cardboard, guys, but in pictures, it looks so great. But it was just to kind of make sure it looked like, you know, hilts of swords were added to the front as well and it wasn't just blades. So just little T-shaped cardboard pieces that you can glue down with your craft foam. And after you've added the gold, copper, and black highlights, now it's time to attach the backing of the chair. And how did yes. you do that? Just a little side note, don't put it on before it's not completely dry. Make sure it's completely dry. Yeah, I was a little a premature. Days. I was a little premature in my assumption on that. <laughs> uh, but once you got it completely dry, and when you attach it, be very careful. You know, it's not going to be the most secure thing, but it one just literally one piece right to the back. Yeah. So that ruler that you glued to all the cardboard pieces to mm -hmm. across, you're going to take that and stick it to the back of the chair, and you're going to screw that in. Yeah. You're going to screw it into the back of the chair. This was a little tricky. We had to play with balance, and of course. It yep. depends on how thick and how many layers you have. So just play with it until you can get that up. And this usually is a two-man job, so someone holds up the fan of cardboard while you screw them in. Yep, and that's it, guys. You yep. guys have yourself an iron throne. Good job. It really wasn't that hard. I thought the difficulty level wasn't very high. It was like minimal screwing with a screwdriver, yep. sanding techniques, and a whole lot of gluing. Um, the cutting was so, I mean, it's so messy of a chair that because it's like 
it made being messy, messy makes was it okay. Good. Exactly. You didn't have to be precise. All the crap bone covered everything anyway. Remember, it, it's melted swords yeah. put into a chair. Yeah. And I like w when we made it, I actually used duct tape to keep all mm -hmm. the swords in place. So when it, the paint hardened, it moved the duct tape and you could see all the colors of the crap bone. Oh, yeah. So definitely use glue and not duct tape, guys. Let us know if you guys build one yourself or if you ever plan to. And if you do, please leave us links of yep. pictures or anything. We would love to see it. We hope you guys enjoy your Iron Throne. Yep. Who do you think is going to sit on the Iron Throne at the end of all of this? Please comment below and let us let know us your know. thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you later. See ya.